The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Jones. Hello and thanks for joining us for Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johns. Coming up on today's show, tucked away in Bullock County is a farm that draws thousands of visitors each year. They come to have fun, but they leave with a greater appreciation for farming. Yesterday, a little girl, she was 10, and she said, you know, I think I want to be a farmer when I grow up. Learning to play a guitar can sure seem like rocket science, but imagine building one. Today, we'll meet a former NASA engineer who makes some beauty. I was a young engineer out at NASA, and I wanted a better guitar, and there was no way I was going to be able to afford one, so I said, I bet I can make one. Sydney Phelps is in the kitchen this week to show you a great way to prepare those big, beautiful bell peppers you grow in your backyard garden. You may have heard about goat yoga, but other four-legged farm animals are anxious to join in all the fun, too. Meet this fleeced herd when Simply Southern returns. What sustains us? Food. Family. Faith. Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources, clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. In the 21st century, yoga has become a popular group exercise. It doesn't require any weights, resistance bands, or equipment, just an exercise mat. And that means it's easy to take a yoga class anywhere, even on a farm. In a yoga class, you expect to hear references to animals with moves like upward dog and the cat and the cow, but an alpaca? No, it's not a new neck-stretching yoga move. It's an event that's become a huge hit for the owners of Humming Star Farm in Silver Hill, Alabama. It made sense to me about the zen of yoga and the zen of the animals mating together. And, and so I thought, well, you know, we'll try it. You know, if it works, fine. If it doesn't, then, then but, but everybody seems to love it. And, and they love being around the alpacas anyway. Alpacas pair well with yoga because they're very peaceful animals and um, so we gave it a try and when I posted it on Facebook for our first um, class it sold out within just like 24 hours and we've been doing it and the alpacas like it and everyone likes it so we're, we're having fun with it. The idea for alpaca yoga developed thanks to Cheryl's friendship with yoga instructor Joy Rose Larson who was looking for a different take on the current trend of goat yoga. And there are some benefits to exercising around alpacas instead of goats. They can't bite you really, or, and they won't jump on you. It's kind of a little happy hour with people and the alpacas in the beginning, and, and then we start to get back to our mats. And of course, everybody can step away from their practice to take a picture if there's a, a, an animal eating out of their hand. You know, it's kind of a free form thing. While country folk might raise their eyebrows about the idea, alpaca yoga is proving to be a big hit. All our classes have been filled with a waiting list, and um, so we've had a good response. Um, interestingly, from people who practice yoga, but also people who don't really practice that much. We've actually had a family from New Orleans come and a number from Pensacola, Florida. We've had people from Pensacola, Florida in each class. So what exactly is it about alpacas that has people clamoring to be included? You get a breeze of air. I mean, the sky was gorgeous. And then on top of that, to have the alpacas walking around, I mean, it's just amazing. I would do it every day. It's just more of a peaceful 
thing, I think, which is what you try to get from yoga anyway. So just to be out in nature and the peacefulness of that while you're doing the yoga, I think it's just a plus. They're like big, fluffy, live, stuffed animals. They, they're light on their feet, they hop around, um, they're curious, they're interested, and they're soft, they're, they're magical. You're in an open field, you know, getting very in touch with yourself and your own, you know, your own inner soul, and then here comes these alpacas that are eating grains, they're literally right next to your face. And um, they're, they're just, they're beautiful animals and they're very interesting. Of course, when communing with nature, sometimes nature calls. They're taller creatures, so when, when, they, when they pee, it's like a faucet, you know, I mean, it really, it's very noisy. But they never, it was never around us. It was always like in the distance that they would go and uh, relieve themselves. Another plus to alpaca yoga over goat yoga. But if tree poses and stretches aren't exactly your thing, you can simply visit the farm store, which has numerous items made from alpaca wool or fleece. The Bowens also host special events like fiber arts classes and an annual farm day. This teaches people about farming and, and what it is we do with the animals and how you go from an alpaca with a fleece on them to having yourself a nice pair of socks or a hat or a sweater or something like that. And while educating people about farming is important, the Bowens are also providing memorable experiences that will keep visitors coming back. I've learned a lot of facts about alpacas while I was here, but the experience that I had was probably, it was one of the best things I've ever done. So you definitely have to come do it. Definitely. Everybody. That was definitely the most interesting exercise class I've ever taken. But by the end of it, I could understand the draw. Now you explained how the alpacas go to the bathroom, but tell me about them spitting on you. Now the farm owners did tell us that they sometimes spit, but it's usually at each other, and a human might just end up as collateral damage. So they'll just be spitting at a buddy and you get in the way. Right, but there is an area where you can go clean up, so no big deal. When Simply Southern continues, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to build a guitar, but it don't hurt. Up next, we'll visit Tangled String Studios, where they build some beauties. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. You could see it before anyone else. Your future, your own place, independence. It's not perfect, but you love it. A place to grow, to be yourself, Life. Dream big. Alpha Insurance. Protect your dream with Alpha's new business owner policies. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes on to the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. Classical instruments are works of art both to the ears and eyes, none probably more beloved than the guitar. For a beginning or casual player, a store-bought Fender or Gibson fits the bill. But serious players tend to be a little more picky. That's when they look for a guy like Danny Davis, an Alabama-based luthier. That's a fancy name for a guitar maker, folks. In the right hands, a guitar is a pleasure to listen to. But when you get into what makes all that picking sound so pretty, it gets complicated. 
if a G note is 98 hertz, 98 cycles per second, well, I want a top of a guitar that responds to uh, that note or a note. And the weird thing about music is if you get one of the notes, you get a lot of them because the way the math of music works out. This is what happens when music and engineering cross paths. But hey, the instruments that make the music we love are marvels of human ingenuity, a perfect hobby for a working stiff at NASA. I had a young family and you know, I was a young engineer out at NASA and didn't have much money. And I wanted a better guitar and there was no way I was gonna be able to afford one, so I said, I bet I can make one. Now retired from NASA, Danny's weekend diversion has turned into a full-time family-owned business venture. His tangled string studios in Huntsville's Low Mill has drawn the attention of the Travel Channel, Southern Living, and a variety of publications across the state. And with customers like Grammy-nominated artists, The Steel Drivers, and Rich Robinson of the Black Crows, the studio's Bonsai logo is catching the attention of string pluckers nationwide. I picked the Bonsai as our logo because that's an example of taking Mother Nature's gifts and forming them into art. The generation of the acoustic property of the guitar is a mechanical process and it, it's carving and thinning and all the kind of cool things, uh, but just, you know, just getting to that sound is really a lot of fun. Music's emotional, and you would expect the, the instrument to be uh, something that responds emotionally to the artist. So I work really hard to meet with the customers and try to tease out of them the, the, uh, the feel of the guitar, the, the look, and, and the, of course, it's gotta be a quality instrument. It's gotta sound the way they want it to sound. Tangle String Studios is becoming a popular destination for live music as well. The venue kind of grew out of our desire to do recording. So we started out um, building the room to be a great recording studio. And uh, one of our team members saw an artist coming through town doing a living room show and said, well, why don't we just do this at the studio? And it turns out it was a whole lot easier and more lucrative than doing recording. And we slowly over time switched from not doing recording to doing shows. We seat 100 people in here. And um, that's after they move all my, st my shop over. And they're getting better at putting it back, but they're not that good at it yet. <laughs> Some folks retire and look for the nearest beach to kick back on. But I guess for a guy who loves music and making things work, Danny's found a way to make it all work. His custom-made guitars are sought after enough that he hardly had any on hand to show us. But don't worry, I don't think he's ready to retire a second time quite yet. It's 12 weeks of work, and in 12 weeks you can really get to know a customer. Because they'll come by and see the progress on their guitar, and uh, you, they walk out with the guitar, and i got a new friend and uh, almost family. One of my idols is Carl Fabergé. He could just be make beautiful things. And that's what I'm working for. I'm trying to get the infrastructure, the tools, the that, and then develop that artistic skill to do it. And I hope, hope to do that when I grow up. If you want to feast your eyes on some stunning six strings, take you a day trip to Huntsville's Low Mill and pay Danny a visit. And if you're interested in taking in one of the many concerts they hold there, you'll find a calendar on their website, tangledstringstudios.com. Coming up next, we'll travel to a farm in Fitzpatrick, Alabama that's both a unique seasonal as well as educational destination. One out of four Alabama residents have benefited from the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Last year, Master Gardener Managed Gardens donated $150,000 worth of fruits and vegetables to food banks and over 25,000 young people developed math, science, technology, and engineering skills through 4-H. Now what we want to know is, how can we help you? And now, an Alabama Tourism Spotlight from Sweet Home, Alabama. A favorite highlight while traveling down the Hank Williams Trail 
is paying respects to the memory of Hiram King Hank Williams. Located in downtown Montgomery, the grave of Hank and his wife, Audrey, is hallowed ground for music lovers worldwide. On any given day, the Oakwood Cemetery is visited by fans of the Butler County native as they reminisce about the many hits and contributions made by one of Alabama's brightest stars. On New Year's Day, a memorial celebration is held at the gravesite. Hank fans gather to lay wreaths, sing some of Hank's 11 number one songs, and pay homage to the Ramblin' Man himself. For your next adventure, go online to alabama.travel. We've been raising fish for 33 years. Our farm and the catfish farms in Hale County, in this area, have had a huge impact on the labor, offering jobs. It's been a big economic boom for West Alabama. Our family is fully invested in U.S. farm-raised catfish. When you think of fun fall activities, corn mazes or pumpkin patches may come to mind. Well, you'll find both of those and more at Dreamfield Farms. But beyond entertainment, this place is teaching the next generation the value of farming and providing families a space to reconnect with nature and each other. Hot summers are just part of life in the South. That may be why the first signs of crisp air draw us outdoors into places like pumpkin patches. Dreamfield Farms is one such place. Located in the small town of Fitzpatrick, it's becoming hugely popular. October at Dreamfield Farms is just a really special time. We open the farm and decorate it for fall. We have pumpkins everywhere. We have all kinds of fall food. And you're going to be able to get out on the lake and go fishing or go out in the corn maze and walk. There's just a million things to do here. Spread out over 200 gorgeous acres of land, the farm is becoming a favorite fall destination for more than just Alabamians. Visitors have come from as far away as Atlanta and Fort Walton Beach. It's also a go-to option for many schools. We're kind of famous for our field trips and people just love the fact that they know that we're going to organize them and keep them on schedule. Both school children and people of all ages can enjoy the farm's wide variety of activities. There's games, rides, hay bale mountains, pig races, and one of the most popular attractions, a petting zoo full of friendly farm animals. We love that no matter if you're six or 60, you can still be a kid at Dreamfield Farms. Dreamfield Farms offers the quintessential fall experience. All the things we love about autumn, from pumpkin patches to hay rides, dot this beautiful landscape in October. But the farm isn't just a seasonal excursion. There's more to this place than pumpkins. While pumpkins help draw in the 20,000 plus visitors who come each October, to owners Kathy and Tom Ellis, this is more than an entertainment venue. Since opening in 2007, their mission has been to educate others about the value of farming. Now kids are two, three, four generations removed from the farm and they really don't understand and we try to help them connect the dots. They do this by making learning fun. As kids enjoy activities, they're also discovering the importance of farms in our daily lives. Madison Aiken runs a station that teaches children how we get our dairy products. We always ask the kids if they like cupcakes. You know, the kids are always jumping in their chairs like, yes, yes, we love it, we love it. So we always tell the kids it is very important as a farmer that we have to milk our cow every single morning so we can have our milk, so we can have all of our yummy treats. The kids even get to try what they learned hands on, and they're pretty proud of themselves. <laughs> they can go home and get to tell mom and dad, you know, like, I learned how to make butter today. I learned how to milk a cow. Over the years, as Kathy and Tom Ellis have observed the positive impact farming education has had on children, their mission has expanded. Somewhere along my journey, we figured out that families really needed this place to come and have a safe place to relax where time kind of stood still. That motivated them to build cabins on the property that each accommodate 12. Guests have access to a swimming pool as well as fishing and boating, but mainly, it's a peaceful place where families can enjoy time together, farmcation style. Families can come and spend a week or a weekend and just relax and get away from it all and enjoy the farm. Farmcations, it's the new vacation. 
In the time the cabins have been open, Kathy has seen the effect they've had on visiting families. They get to step off the hamster wheel, slow down, and really see each other, and I just love that. I love to see that on their faces and in their hearts. Inspired by what Dreamfield Farms has done for thousands of children and families, Kathy and Tom Ellis keep adding on. They now host Christmas activities in December and other special events throughout the year. What always remains at the heart of their work is a love of farming they hope to impart on present and future generations. The family farms are important to the backbone of our country and the backbone of our food chain and people need to get in touch with that. For Simply Southern, I'm Melissa Bowman. The versatile peanut, meat of the earth, friend of the soil, tasty, nutritious, packed with protein. And Alabama peanut farmers nourish some very special things, families, communities, and Alabama's economy. Peanuts, good for you, good for Alabama. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your quality co-op store. There's one near you. For more Simply Southern, be sure to follow us on social media. And while you're online, visit our website, simplysoutherntv.net. Simply Southern will continue in a moment. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is, it's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center, Bonnie Plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. We're in the kitchen today and we're making stuffed bell peppers. So what we've got going on here right now is I've got some uh, one pound of ground beef that's already been drained and seasoned. I'm going to be adding some onions in this. This is one uh, fresh green onion, so we're going to mix that in. And we're going to add in two cloves of garlic that have already been minced up and diced. So what we're doing is he here today is we're going to do stuffed red bell peppers with a couscous. So you probably don't use couscous a lot in your cooking, uh, but this is a definitely a, a good way to mix in new things into some familiar foods. So while we're letting the onions and everything cook, I have got a teaspoon of chili powder. So just gonna mix that in. Also got a teaspoon of cinnamon. So add a little bit of spice to it. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt to taste. So gonna mix this up really good. Uh, like I said, the, the meat has already been browned. We've already drained all the fat out of that. I've got the oven preheated to 450 degrees because we're going to put the bell peppers in there once we get going here. So, get our onions cooking here nicely. All right. While that's getting together, basically what we want to do is we've got the couscous already cooked. Now, it's very easy to cook. Uh, just like you're working with any pasta, you want to follow the directions that are on the packaging. So, in this case, what we have got is we are looking at a cup of couscous with a cup of water, uh, some margarine and some salt uh, for taste. And basically, you get the water and everything up to a bowl, and once you get it up to a bowl, you basically just move it, remove it directly from the heat. You don't want it to be uh, as part of the process. So as soon as you get it up to a bowl, add the, the couscous noodles in there, or pasta, and basically you want to work that into uh, removing it from the heat and you want to let it sit. 
Uh, you want to let it sit and get covered. That'll allow it to, to start getting right. Um, and in that process, basically what you're doing is allowing it to steam up. Now, um, after about two or three minutes, you just want to take a spoon or fork and fluff it up really well. And then you can work it into whatever dishes you're using. Uh, a lot of times people just serve it on the fly as a, as a side dish. So today we're mixing it in here with our meat. So we're going to let this cook on low. Uh, and while this is cooking, what I'm basically going to do is just take some bell peppers here and I'm going to basically take the tops off. So we're just going to remove the cap and then we'll go in here and just pull out uh, the seeds, core it out and set them here to the side. I'm just going to do this with all of these peppers. Just take the caps off and remove that center out. So that's just getting all the seeds and everything out of there. You can keep the caps uh, and, and put them back on top uh, if you want to do it as a kind of a decoration or if you're doing anything for a party. But basically take all these out. And then the process we're going to go from there is just basically stuffing these peppers with the mixture we have. Uh, I've got some pepper jack cheese here and I'm adding the pepper jack cheese because we've got the sweet with this pepper so I like to do a consistency of sweet and heat. So we're just basically going to take the pepper jack and have a little bit of heat flavor coming through there. So check on our mixture here and I think we're good to start adding in some of the goodies here. So basically just going to take a spoon, take the mixture, put that in the base here. So in the base of the pepper, then we're going to come back with some pepper, jack cheese, stack it and just layer after layer. So you've got all those onions and beef with the couscous and then you've got a layer of cheese. So that looks really good. I'm just going to set this over here on our sheet pan. Uh, like I said before, we've got the oven set at 450, so once we get these stuffed, we'll throw them in the oven. They'll cook uncovered for about 30 minutes, and then you can pull them back out, and you'll have great stuffed papers right out of your oven. If you want to check out any more recipes, go to bonnieplants.com or the app Homegrown with Bonnie Plants. In addition to recipes, bonnieplants.com is your source for gardening information any time of the day or night. But if you'd like to ask Sydney a question about something that's going on in your garden, drop him a line at simplysouthern at alifarm.com. That'll bring us to the end of another episode of Simply Southern. Thanks for watching. Next week, we'll show you how an Alabama company is creating art that's made to last because it's made out of cast iron. And you'll see how turf grass experts prepare greens and fairways for some of the top golfers in the country to play. I'm Mary John. And I'm Jim Allen. I hope you'll join us again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.